Are you tired of the same old events? Are you looking for something new and exciting? Do you want to entertain yet still make money? Well, you've come to the right place. Hello, everyone. My name is Phil Immordino with the GTAA, and this is another free webinar. For over 30 years, we've had the opportunity to work with thousands of tournament planners around the world. And we have one simple mission, and that is to help you produce the best golf tournament possible. You know, it was said, without wisdom, there is darkness. Well, today we're going to share some wisdom so that you can see in the dark how to host a night golf tournament. That's our topic. And we're going to talk about things like what type of equipment do you need? How do you set it up? How can you make money? How do you get sponsors? How do you get golfers? What are the games and contests? and everything in between. So we are so glad that you could join us. It's also said that a picture paints a thousand words. And I think a video says it even better. So if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna show you a little short video that'll give you a full picture of what we're talking about. All the guys from Corona and Conservation Brands for allowing us from Tucson, Arizona, City to City to come out here and play on this beautiful course. So what you just witnessed is a, an event that uh, is put on by Corona, and they did a half-night, half-day golf tournament, and it went really well. And we're going to talk a little bit about how they did that, how does that look, and uh, how can you do it uh, for your organization. So thanks for joining us. Again, uh, the topic today is how to produce a night golf tournament. And we're going to get into the, uh, the nitty gritty here in two seconds, as soon as I can get up the uh, webinar for you. The PowerPoint, give me two seconds. Hopefully you're seeing the PowerPoint now. And uh, so the first question is going to be, what is a night golf tournament? And the very simple definition is it's a golf tournament at night. Uh, the difference is we use glowing golf balls, light up golf balls. And if you've never seen these, these are really sharp. You hit them once and they stay lit for about 10 minutes and you can play, play in the dark. No lights on the golf course, uh, just the lighted golf balls with a few other uh, LED lights around. Now, what is the purpose of this type of an event? You can be used for several reasons. You can do entertaining, just entertaining customers or donors, uh, or just uh, make it a fun event to make money. You can do networking. You can have an association or a chamber or uh, just pulling your employees together. But you can also make money, and that's uh, one of the things we're going to talk about today. In the format itself, you can do it many ways. Typically, it's nine holes in the dark right when the sun goes down and it gets a little bit dark you, know, you can start this event but we've seen it done with 18 uh, holes uh in the dark but that gets to be a late night we've seen it done half in the day half at night uh, you can also throw in a skills challenge so it's really going to be up to you exactly how you want to format that but there's many ways so the first thing you're going to need is a golf course how do you find a golf course and uh, there's many golf courses in your community that probably have done them before. And that's important. Ask the question, have you done one before? And the reason that's important is because a golf course will understand it. They'll get it. They may even have the equipment. 
there's a lot of golf courses that have not done this before, so they do not understand it completely. And you're going to want to find one with experience. If not, we can help you walk through that. We can also help walk it through with the golf course. Ideally, you're going to want to find a shorter golf course. We recommend an executive golf course, which typically is going to be about 6,000 yards. And that's the best route to go. But if you're going to use a full-size golf course, there's not a problem. You're just going to want to use the upfront tees, ideally the red tees, the women's tees as they're referred to. But you're going to want to make it a short, easier course from upfront tees. Not saying that you couldn't use the back tees, but uh, especially if you don't have a lot of experienced golfers, you're going to want to use the front tees. You're going to want to find a golf course that's not too difficult. If you have a lot of water, a lot of sand, a lot of trees, it could make into a very frustrating night. You want one that's kind of flat, one that's not very hilly, and, and uh, especially at night, that could be dangerous. Um, you're going to get a great deal on the golf course because, again, typically it's nine holes, so it's going to be half the price. Most likely, the golf course does not book tee times at night, so you're going to get a better deal. I think you need to look for a rate between $25 and $35 per golfer. Um, they may provide the equipment and the food. They may not, so be prepared for that, and uh, we can work with you on, on how to do that. So the next question is, what is the equipment that you're going to need? And uh, not that you need it all, but ideally, this is the perfect setup. First of all, you're going to want LED lights, lights that uh, golf balls that uh, that glow in the dark. And again, you hit these balls and they stay lit for about 10 minutes and then you hit them again and they stay lit for another 10 minutes. But they come in a variety of colors so you can give your different players different colors. You're then going to need some yardage markers. You're going to want to line the fairways with LED lights. Um, you can see these over here on the right-hand side, different colors. Um, I like to see, you know, green lights down the middle of the fairway. I like to see white lights around the cart paths. I like to see red lights for hazard markers around the sand traps and around water to make sure that people see where that is. And then... Um, the blue one's usually around the green. Now, there's no set formula, but that's kind of what I like to see. You're next going to need to see some pin flags, some fla a way to mark the flag so they can see it from a long distance. Um, golfers are going to be hitting in the dark, so it's hard to see where the green is and where the flag. So you can line the green with LED lights, and you can light up the flag uh, so they can see exactly where they're where they're heading. You also uh, are going to want a little ring that goes in the bottom of the cup, which uh, ideally it will help the golfers when they're putting. Some other things that you may need is uh, uh, maybe the top of the flag. There's some uh, flag markers so they can see it a little bit better. Uh, you may want some tee uh, markers to show the golfers where they're teeing off. And then uh, if you have sponsors, obviously some sponsor signs and lights. Uh, glow rings for the golfers, um, necklaces for the golfers, things that can identify the golfers because golfers want to see where other golfers are so no one's going to be hit by a golf ball. And trust me, it's dark out there, so you want to light up those golfers so there's no injuries because safety is going to be the key in this situation. You want to give each uh, cart a, a, a flashlight, not necessarily to use to putt and to hit. We don't want to use that flashlight. It kind of takes away from the uh, challenge of night golf, but you want to use a flashlight to look at the, where they're going, if, if they're driving carts, where the cart paths are, and where some of the danger is. So make sure that you uh, have a flashlight for them. And then you want to light up the golf carts. If you're using golf carts, definitely light up the golf carts because, again, golfers are going to be uh, hitting from a long distance, and they want to see where the golfers are and where the golf carts are. Now, what does this look like on the setup? How do you want to set it up? Uh, ideally, you're going to want to give yourself a couple of hours to set this up in the beginning uh, before the players get there, before everyone gets set up. Now, these lights are, are triggered by pulling a little tab, so um, you don't have to light them right away. You can run around and light them later before everyone starts playing. But ideally, you're going to want to give yourself a couple of hours in advance, depending on how many people you have to help you get set up. You also are going to want a registration table, obviously for the golfers to check in. Uh, you're going to want to get those sponsor signs up and try to light those sponsor lights 
signs up so the sponsors get some exposure. You're going to want some goodie bags because, again, just like a typical tournament, you're going to want to give the golfer something when they arrive. You're going to want to light up those carts. You're going to want to light up the cart pass, yardage markers, put out the hazard markers. Very, very, very important to, to mark off the hazards because you do not want carts and people walking into sand traps and spraining their ankle. Uh, or walking into the lakes and so forth. So ideally, you want a simple golf course that doesn't have too much of that to make it complicated. So you're going to want to uh, put the glow rings out. But if you can see the golf course that I've laid out here for you, um, you've got the fairways lit. Uh, so they see where the ball should be you know, aimed for. You've got the sand traps and the waters lit in red. And then you've got the greens lined up. In a light green. So uh, if it's done right, it looks great. The fairways look like an airport runway and uh, really look sharp out there, which means you're going to want to buy a few extra lights. So in any tournament, obviously you want a committee like we've always talked about. Same situation applies. You're going to need a chairman, someone to run the event for you, oversee the process, ideally a volunteer. You're going to need someone to oversee sponsors. You still need sponsors. Because, again, sponsors are always the profit. You need a golfer chairman, someone to make sure that they're following up with all the golfers and then you uh, get the golfers that you need. Uh, you want a gift and prize chairman, someone to make sure they're getting all the gifts, the goodie bag, the first, second place prize, the skills challenge, which we're going to talk about. Uh, and then someone to do the logistics. Again, the reason you want so many, yes, you could probably do this by yourself, but you get burnout. But the reason you want a volunteer committee is it just makes it fun. People love to be involved in something unique and different. It divvies up the work so no one's overwhelmed and everyone can participate in getting golfers. Everyone can participate in getting sponsors. But you want a committee to kind of oversee each area to make sure that it gets done right. In an event, we always talk about sponsors. You need sponsors. Now, we have a full-blown video on how to get sponsors. I encourage you to go to the YouTube channel the golf tournament channel and looked on how to sell sponsors. But as always, you want to give them a return on investment. It's all about relationships. It's all about your people connected to potential companies. The video that you saw was uh, done by Corona and Modelo, and they're bringing in customers. They're bringing in bar managers and bar owners because they wanted to entertain them. And so that's what you saw there. But sponsors are your profit, so you don't want to leave yourself short. In, uh, in raising money if that's your goal. If it's not your goal, then usually the golfers will uh, cover the expense of the event itself. So the next thing that you're going to want to make sure is looking at uh, uh, golfers. How do you get golfers? Uh, again, we have a full-blown video on how to get golfers uh, on the Golf Tournament channel. But bottom line, it's relationships. It's friends asking friends. And if you have something fun and unique, uh, people will want to be uh, on board. If you're doing a fundraiser, make sure it's a good cause. Make sure you're making it clear uh, what you're raising the money for. But you can be entertaining clients. You can be uh, bringing your employees together. You can be uh, uh, networking with maybe uh, folks in the community, other businesses in your industry. Make sure that everyone signs a waiver. A waiver is very, very important because people may sprain their ankles out there. They don't want you want, don't want them suing you. You don't want them suing the golf course. So make sure that they all sign the waiver. But again, we have a full video on how to fill your field with golfers. So refer to that. So what's this going to cost you? What does it look like? How's the income? Ideally, like in all events, uh, it shouldn't cost you anything if you do it right. Uh, you've got uh, sponsors covering uh, the expenses and bringing in some income. You've got golfers generating some revenue and at least covering your costs. You can add a little bit to that registration fee. Um, you've got games and contests. You've got skills challenge. You've got putting contests you can charge for. And if you decide to do an auction, you've got that availability also. Then you've got your expenses. Of course, you've got, um, you know, your golf course is going to charge you anywhere from 25 to 35 a player. You've got equipment that's going to be anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks a player, depending on how fancy you want to get. You've got some food, another 15 to 20 bucks a player. Uh, and then you've got gifts and prizes. Uh, you've got insurance. Now, there's a couple types of insurance that you want to consider. Um, actually, three. You may want to consider weather insurance to make sure the weather stays nice for you. You want to look at um, uh, liability insurance. Now, most likely the golf course will have that. Your organization should also have some type of liability insurance. Uh, if not, contact your broker 
add, add a, uh, a just a policy just for that event to your current policy. Don't, don't try to go out and get a standalone uh, policy because they can be expensive, but uh, you are going to have that expense. And then the final insurance would be any hole in one or putting contest. Uh, we did one for ten thousand dollars in the putting contest, which you saw in the video. A lot of fun. Something that you may want to consider. So that's going to be what your budget's going to look like. Um, the next thing that we want to look at is the day of operations, the schedule. What does that look like? Typically, you're going to, again, want to set up a couple hours in advance before the sun sets. Now, keep in mind, it's not dark, dark when the sun just sets. So you want to give it a little bit of time to get your golfers there about an hour before sunset. And you have some food and some drinks. And that's always fun to hang out and get folks uh, going. Uh, but right when it's sunset, you want to get everyone in their carts. You're going to have a shotgun start. So you obviously want to have hold assignments and send them out before. And then uh, once it's dark enough, you make that determination. A little after sunset, you're going to send everybody off. Uh, again, shouldn't take more than a couple of hours, uh, depending on how difficult the course is, depending on how packed you are. You want the award ceremony. You know, after that, and then shouldn't last more than an hour. Um, and that typical schedule can be fun. I really love to see a skills challenge. I want to encourage a skills challenge. What does that look like? Well, you can do it before the event or even after the event. Uh, and it looks like a putting contest, maybe for a qualifier, and then a $10,000 shootout at the end in the dark. You've got chipping contests, you've got long drive contests, you've got targets you can buy where they try to hit the targets, but those you can charge for, uh, make a little money, and then have some great prizes to give away. So that's always a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, some of you may have never done this before. You may have tried it before. If you're a golf course, then I would really recommend you offering this service to your customers because uh, you're going to get a lot more customers. If you're a charity or an association, it can be a standalone event. I'm not saying you know, maybe uh, replace your current event, but it's always a different, unique kind of event. What I like about night golf tournament is that everyone can do it. Uh, you can bring in all types of golfers, uh, even beginners, because it's kind of a novelty. It's kind of like miniature golf where all types of uh, people will participate. If you need some help, we'd love to help you. You know, we've been doing this for over 30 years. We have all the tools, all the equipment. Uh, if you need the equipment, let me know. We have a connection with Knight Flyer, which we can get great, the best pricing with the biggest distributor in the world, and we can help you with all the equipment. So definitely email me after this webinar. We'd love to hear any of your questions, any comments that you may have. Uh, we're here to serve you. Um, we've been doing this for a long time, and so my question is, do you like the idea? Can you make this happen? And uh, my guess is you can. It's a fun, different event, and we're here to help you make it. So I've got a night golf manual, kind of a step-by-step -step printed. If you want a copy of that, please let me know. Email me. Let me know what you think of this webinar. Uh, we're always trying to improve these, and we're here to serve you. So shoot me off an email. I'll send you that uh, manual, step-by-step -step manual. And uh, send us any questions you have. We'd love to serve you for any of your golf tournament needs. So, again, thanks for joining us. This is Phil and Mordino. Appreciate your time. Good luck with your next event.